Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another small mining ship. And this one is very sleek and very elegant with its design and called the Personal Mole Miner, which is this lovely thing I'm currently driving. So we've got a single drill at the front, which is perfectly placed, or the ship has been perfectly designed, so you can drill straight through a mountainside without damaging anything around the ship. There's enough clearance there so you can make a small mistake here and there, but if you do start to veer off, you could have a problem while trying to reverse this. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the personal mole miner is 172 small blocks using the Warfare 2, Sparks of the Future, Waysan, and Decorative Block Number 2 DLC packs. So giving this thing a thumbs up when we round towards the very front, we'll have a quick look around the outside, then we'll test it out and end it there. If I do sound funny, I am very slowly losing my voice, but I can't really do too much about that. So, at the very front, this is what we get. So front and center is a drill to drill through the mountainside. To the right of that, we've got a camera which is currently sitting on top of a reactor, and we can see a atmospheric thruster, which is the only form of thrust that appears on this ship. You just about make out a ore detector right above there, with a bunch of barred window blocks in a black coloring, and around onto the side, we can see the glow of a bunch of interior lights. Moving around onto the side, we've got a bunch of cargo containers, which is the only drawback of this ship. We've only got small cargo containers, so the bulk of the stuff is going to be stored in both your connector and the drill at the front. Yes, round onto the side, that's what that looks like. We've got an LCD screen at the back with a warning label. We can see some great use of our neon tubes in the black, acting as little handlebars to grab up and go on top of the ship. Then coming around closer over to here, we've got some more great use of our barn to win blocks, just covering up the tops of those atmospheric thrusters. And there is a programmable block, which is going to be for our cargo used, so we can track how full we are and if we're wasting resources. Round towards the back, we've got a connector to dock this thing up, and of course to eject out anything we don't need. And there are some more spotlights just to blind us. Moving all the way up, we've got an LCD screen setting Uncle J. Then we've got some magnetic plates, which is a unique way to dock this thing up. So you just clamp it up to the ceiling, instead of landing it down to the floor. Anyway, looking down, there's a bunch of atmospheric thrusters, which is one to help out moving down. There's the rover seat to drive this thing around, access points for our cargo containers, then at the front, a bunch of LCD screens, as well as a programmable block with the automatic LCD screen script on it. There's our artificial horizon, and there's our cargo, with exactly what we've got contained in our containers, which is always a useful thing to have on a mining. Moving up and continuing along towards the very front, there is our ore detector. There's some more great use of our neon tubes acting as little handlebars, and there is another magnetic plate on the side there, just in case you want to dock it up on that side. Just dropping down and coming underneath it, this is all we can see. So there's the bottom of our reactor and camera, there's our atmospheric thrusters, there's some great use of our armoured panels, as well as some more magnetic plates if you want to lock it down in a traditional way. And at the back there, there's a similar setup to the front, but this time we've got our barred window block, which is covering up the bottom of the one pushing us down. And there's another light at the very back. And there we go, that's a very brief look around the outside of the personal ball miner. And it does look great with how it's been set up. Very sleek, very elegant design. And it's time to test it out. So bring up the HUD, tab number one. Number one is going to be for our drills to left mouse to click all, right mouse to make a big hole. Number two is for the camera right next to it, but because I am using a mod, I can rotate this all the way around and get a better view. Number three is for our atmospheric thrusters all the way around the ship to turn them on and off. Number four is for our batteries to auto or recharge. Number five is for our magnetic place on and off. Number six is to lock and unlock it. Number seven and number eight is then to draw everything to the connector and then eject it out. And number nine is of course to lock and unlock the connector. Tab number two, the first two are going to be for our beacon to turn them on and off and to activate like an emergency sequence where it starts to blink constantly. Number three is then to turn on and off our beacon. Number four is for our antenna. Number five is for our lights all the way around the ship. And then number six is for our reactors on and off with 7, 8, and 9 being for our programmable block, but we're not going to touch that. But now what I can do is just fly this round over to this mountainside, we can start drilling it up, see how much this can carry, and see how well it handles once it's full up. So just come all the way up to it, we can use our fancy camera to get a good view of what's going on, and we'll start drilling up this stone. So here we go, we now start using the left mouse button, start drilling this away. If I come to third person view, you can see that this will make a big enough hole to drive all the way through. And we'll very slowly get all the way through it. It won't take too long to fill this thing up. In fact, I don't even think I need to cut anything out. Because it should be near enough instant. But for the sake of that, we'll just keep going forwards with the left mouse button. Just so you can see the hole it creates. And just how safe it is to drive all the way forwards. And there we go. Once this dust starts to settle, this is the hole it creates. So there is a perfect clearance all the way around this. 
No risk of damaging anything and no risk of randomly locking that magnetic plate on the side. So now just reversing this thing up because we should be nice and full. I just dinged the rock on the side because I did end the whole bit wonkily. But looking on the side we can see we are almost full. Just popping out of that and actually looking at it. There we go, we're only 84% full, but that should be good enough for this. Suppressing I coming into here, hiding all the MD, this is what we get. So we've got 3.1k in our connector, 87 in our drill. Then down to here will be our small car containers where we've got barely anything in there. But it does seem like we are completely filled up. So how does this handle now? So turning this thing around, it's a lot more heavier than it was before. Driving forwards are pretty slow, but it's still respectable at the end of the day. Coming to a stop, that's what we get. It appears to be equally as fast forwards and backwards. Moving left. And moving right, we've got a surprising amount of speed for that. Moving up, we should have a nice lot of speed and it is very good that you have a lot of thrusters underneath there to lift you up. You should never know how heavy you are. And you never know there's going to be an issue. Let's say someone slams all the way down like so. And you almost hit the ground. But that is that for the personal, well, minor. It's a lovely little mining ship if you are looking for something that has looks over functionality. Yes, it does suffer from not having enough cargo space on here for long mining runs, but it does collect up enough to be useful in survival mode. So be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download it and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.